Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And in this video, we have a really special printer that I think the whole world probably knows because it's called the Ender 3. That has been the go-to printer for just about everyone. Now, this is not the original Ender 3, but the version 2. And will the Ender 3 live out its legacy for years to come? So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. All right, so let's get started. Alright, so I'm pretty excited to open this thing up. So in the front here we have a picture and the box is not that large. So we have the dimensions here, 57 by 38 by 20 centimeters. And it weighs about 9.5 kilograms, which is a little over 20 pounds. Alright, so let's go ahead and open it up. So this is quite exciting. So Creality normally does a great job of packing and it looks like no exception here. I like how they use this black foam. And the top layer actually has more foam stuck underneath it, kind of filling the gaps. All right, so right on the top, we have the manual and it's in a little plastic bag. And so here we can see all of the pieces. And if you had the original Ender 3, you know that it is a kit and you have to put it together. And this one is no exception. Now there are a few things that are made easier, but overall it's still a kit and you will need to put it together. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's just pull out some of these parts. So here we have the Z-axis and extruder assembly, and it's all pre-mounted on the frame. Very nice. Definitely looks quite refined. And one of the details I'm noticing is that even though this extruder assembly is plastic, they do have a brass feeder in there so it doesn't eat up the plastic. So that's a really nice touch there. And the pulley gears are pressed on, so you can't just take them off with an Allen wrench. And we do have pretty nice looking steppers, and it does say Creality 4240 on them. So here we have the spool holder and looks like we're still using a top mounted style spool holder which has a metal bracket and a plastic piece that'll go here. All right, so here we have something really interesting and this is the display. So this is going to be the new generation for Creality. It appears that it's not a touch screen but you have still this rotary knob that you use to navigate. And it's very nicely made. Everything is enclosed and this is where we're gonna plug it in in the back. So this is a big upgrade from the original Ender. All right, so here we have our couple 2020 channels. One of them is our x-axis channel and the other one is the top brace. And here we have the hot end and the hot end looks quite different, especially this cover here. And we do have a silicone sock. Very interesting design. Definitely looks like it would be a little bit harder to get into this thing if you wanted to. All right, so for next part, it looks like we just need to take out this whole base. So the hot end is tethered to it. Try to carefully pull it out of there. All right, and that looks really nice. It's built very well. So I'm gonna put this to the side for now. I'm gonna take a closer look at it in a bit. Let's see what else we have in the package. So we have another layer here of foam. And underneath we can see the rest of our pieces. So we have the Z-axis motor and the coupler is pre-mounted. Looks like some hardware, our end stop switch for the Z-axis, some samples of filament, a belt, the extruder knob looks like. That's nice that it includes that. And a few more other things in there. Here we have a bag of tools, some zip ties, snippers, and all of our wrenches that we're going to need. US power cord, the x-axis bracket, a small spatula, which is not sharpened, but I don't think you need one for the bed that this printer has. Well, it looks like a belt tensioner bracket that we'll have to install. And last but not least, our channels, and inside the channel, there is our Z-Rod. So it is inside this rubber protector. And the last part here is our two vertical channels, which is part of our gantry. And that appears to be everything for the box. 
And here guys, we can see all of our pieces and this shouldn't be too hard to put together. So if you have any experience in assembling anything, this should be straightforward. Now at the same time, if you've never assembled anything before, this might be a little challenging, but we're gonna go step by step and hopefully this video will help you. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the base. So you guys can see we have the build plate on top and it is ultra base type with the little dimples on it where they heat up and they grab the filament and then as it cools, it releases. So this is definitely a nice little upgrade here. Some people prefer the Ender 3 Pro's bed, which is a magnetic bed that you just, you know, peel off and it's definitely very easy and convenient, but those degrade quite quick over time if you print a lot. So this should last a bit longer and just be more durable overall as long as, you know, you don't scratch it too hard. So there's two clips here on each side. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and take those off. They just slide right off. And that's what keeps the bed in place, which is quite interesting. So I'm just going to move this out of the way because what I want to do is I want to flip the printer over. And the reason for that, check out what's under here. And right off the bat, guys, you can see this is very, very well made. You can really see how Creality has upgraded everything over time. So we have our power supply here in the back and it's completely encased. Here we have a drawer, which is included with this printer. And we're going to open that up a little bit later. And here we have a cover where the electronics are. So let's go ahead and open this up so we can see a little closer what's inside. So I'm going to grab my tool baggie, which we have some snippers, a few zip ties, a clean out needle, so this is if your hot end gets clogged, you can use this needle to clean it out. And it looks like we have a little flat screwdriver, a few Allen wrenches, and a couple regular wrenches. I'm going to grab a wrench from here, and we're going to unscrew these three bolts from this cover. And there's actually another bolt on the other side, right over here. So once we get those four bolts out, this lid should just pop off and we can see that there's a fan that cools off the board. So here we can see what the board looks like. So everything is very nice and tight in there. Looks like all of our stepper drivers are synced and they are not removable. And it looks like we do have an ARM processor, Creality logo, and the version 4.2.2. Yeah, so everything looks very nice and tidy. And usually Creality does a great job of tidying everything up. A little nervous about this area here because these are very sharp edges from the cut and the wires are kind of right on them, but they do have protection, so that should be all right. And we do have a fuse on the board also and a large heatsink right here. And I think that's some kind of power regulator there. So. so yeah, this is what the Ender 3 version two board looks like. Now it does feel a little tight in there. Adding any kind of mods might be a little bit hard. All right, so I'm gonna put this lid back on and then we're gonna flip it around and start putting it together. And also guys, I wanted to mention about these feet. They're very nice. So this is what Creality has been using lately on their higher end printers. And it's nice to see it here on the Ender 3. All right, so before we can continue with our build, we need to check a few things. Now, one of those things is the frame. Make sure the frame is sitting level. So if it doesn't wobble around side to side, that means it's quite level. Now, if it does wobble, what you wanna do is you wanna untighten these bolts on each side and that'll let it go to where it's flat and then we can tighten them up. But in any case, we wanna go ahead and check all these bolts also. Make sure they're tight because over time they do loosen and they loosen quite a bit. Like this one was very loose. And same thing on this side. I want to check it, make sure they're nice and tight. Again, this one is very loose. So we found quite a few loose bolts and we want to tighten everything up because the more solid the printer is, the less problems we'll have in the future. And also what's quite important, if we flip the printer around, you can see there's four bolts right here. So these four bolts is what holds the Y axis. So if these are loose, your whole Y axis could move around because it's pivoting here. There's quite a lot of leverage on each end. So you want to make sure that these are tight. So we're going to go ahead and check these. So these are pretty good. And this one is completely loose. I mean, it wasn't even tight. Look at that. Wow, that's crazy. And this is why it's important to check this. This one is quite loose also. All right. So now that we know these are tight, we'll be confident that our Y axis here will not shift like this. And so the next thing you want to check is your bed. So the bed has rollers that it rolls on on the channel and they're usually loose and mine are loose. And that's a good thing because you rather have them loose so you can adjust them right than have them too tight and you know wear out. And if they're too tight, they'll definitely mess with your print quality. So we're going to grab this wrench and hopefully you guys can see, but there are rollers right here. There's one, two. These are stationary, so they're not adjustable. But if we go to the other side, we can see we have eccentric nuts on this side. And this is what this wrench is for. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick our hand in there. And we're going to feel which roller is loose. And it feels like it's that back one right there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our wrench and we're going to 
turn it just a bit and that should tighten it up. Okay, and that actually did tighten it up and it seems to be about right. Now the way I like to check these, if you stick your finger in there and you actually spin the roller, you can feel how much tension it's pushing on the rail. So if you go in there and you twist the roller and it spins on the rail and you can feel the friction, that's how you can tell how tight they are. So if you can't spin the roller at all, it's way too tight. If you spin it and the drag is quite heavy, then it means you need to loosen it. So what you want to do is you want to get to the point where the drag is quite light and at the same time the bed is not moving. As you can see, the bed doesn't move, but the motion is very smooth and easy. So if you feel any kind of like jumpiness or anything funny, that means your rollers are probably too tight. Or it means that maybe your belt is not running true on these pulleys. So we also need to check those. And speaking about the belt, I can see here on the front, we are definitely not running in the middle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to loosen the belt completely so that it's loose. And then I'm going to go underneath the bed and I'm going to make sure that the tab that goes and hangs onto the frame is all the way across where it needs to be. I'm just going to use this larger wrench and push it over and also check the other side. So now I'm going to tighten the belt and we can see the belt is running a lot more truer, basically almost right where it needs to be. So adjusting all these things will help to the overall experience of the printer. All right, so I think it's time to whip out the manual. And it looks like we have a few more things in there. So there's an after sales warranty card and how to contact the company. And it looks like a little thank you note. All right, so let's see what the Ender 3 version 2 manual looks like. So compared to the old days, Creality has moved up quite a bit in how they provide the information and it's all very nicely laid out. So here we can learn about the printer and what all the parts are. Here we have the basic parameters, all the pieces that are included. You can see there's quite a few of them. All right, and here we have step one. And out of curiosity, there are nine steps to building the printer and then step 10 is bed leveling. So for step one, we're gonna need these larger channels and they are plastic wrapped. And this is what they look like. They're actually two different channels. As you can see, there's two little holes here on the side, and then we have two larger holes up higher on the other one. So if we look at the picture here on step one, we can see the one with the two holes up high goes on the right side as you're looking to the front of the printer, and the other one with the two little holes goes down on the left side. So the one with the two little holes will go on this side, and then the two separated larger holes on the right side, and the holes are on the inner part of the channel to the inside. So let's grab our hardware that we're gonna need in this bag. We do have the Z-axis switch here, and we're actually gonna need this in this step also. Let's take a quick look what else is in this bag. So we have, it looks like some caps for the profiles, M5 T-nuts, our micro SD memory card with a USB adapter, some more bolts and the ones we are gonna need right now, which are the M545s, a couple of PTFE tubing couplers and a, an extra nozzle and some clips. A belt for our x-axis, an extruder knob, and this is a nice little touch. So this goes on top of the extruder so you can visually see it turn and also turn it manually, kind of like a little knob, so very nice. And of course we get a little bit of sample filament that looks like to be white PLA. But we are after these M545 bolts and we need four of them, but there are five. So I'm not sure if that's extra or needed somewhere else, we'll find out. So I'm gonna remove one of the channels and we can work on this one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a bolt through it and then we're gonna put our channel in correctly like this and start the bolts with our hand and do the same for the other one. Grab our wrench. So what we want to do here is we want to just snug them up and not tighten them at all. We actually want them a little loose. This is quite important because we're building out the whole frame on the upper gantry so we want everything to be aligned correctly. All right so I just barely snugged it and you can see the channel still moves around back and forth and twists around and that's what you want. You want it to be moving around at this stage and we're going to do the same thing on the left side. The little holes down all right, so we got this channel snugged up, but it's moving also. So in the first step, they also want us to install the Z-axis switch. And this is what that looks like. It's in its own little separate bag. And it is a little plastic bracket with the switch on it. And if you guys look at the bracket, you can see that there's a little nub here sticking out. And this part that sticks out is actually gonna set right here on top of the channel. So it goes in like this. There's a couple T-nuts I need to loosen up. So the T-nuts move around. We're gonna align them up and down like this. So we're simply gonna go into the channel and then we're gonna go all the way down and there's a little stopper here that will stop it and it'll sit right on top. So once you're all the way down like this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unscrew the bolt a bit and then screw it back in and that should turn the T-nut inside the channel and lock it in. And so this is our Z-axis end stop switch. So for the next step, step two, we have the Z-axis motor and rod. So the motor and rod go just behind the switch here, right in the back of the channel. And here is the stepper motor. 
and we can see that the brackets are already installed on the back of it and so that simply just goes right here and the two little holes are for mounting this motor so we will need two m418 volts and so the bolts will go through the bracket and then into the channel now the motor does sit a little bit off of the bottoms. Now here's something to consider. If you tighten these bolts all the way, you might tighten them where the motor ends up sitting a bit crooked because it does fluctuate quite a bit on all these parts here. You wanna make sure that you're not leaning side to side anywhere. And that leads us to our next step, which is putting the lead screw in. And that'll simply go into this coupler, just like that. Tighten up this little bolt here that'll compress the coupler and hold the lead screw. So let's go ahead and tighten that up. Now the best way to line this up, what you want to do is just eyeball it here where it's level as possible to the top on this channel. And if it looks pretty close, just tighten it right there. As you tighten it, it might move, so keep an eye on it. All right, so our Z-axis motor is on and the lead screw is tight on the coupler. Make sure both of the bolts are nice and tight. So for the next part, we're going to move the printer out of the way because on step three, we're going to be building the X-axis assembly. And so we're going to need one of these 2020 channels. And there are two of them, and one of them has a bunch of holes, you guys can see. And the other one just has two holes on each side. That's the one that goes on the top of the printer. But this one here, this is where all of our parts to the X-axis will go on. So this is where we're going to use our extruder slash X-axis assembly here. We'll also need our belt. We're going to need our M416 bolts. And now we can put this thing together. So it might be a little confusing, even if looking at the manual, because, you know, it is a little strange how this whole piece goes together. And so the best way to know which side goes where is that if you look at these little holes, the two that are closer together go to the assembly. And the ones that are farther apart, those go to the idler bracket on the other side. So this wallowed out area here with the two small holes actually fits over this bolt right here. So if we take our channel, and we just go down onto the bolt. Well, you guys can see that. I'm just gonna go down just like that. And then these two threaded holes will accommodate two bolts that will go through here. So let's grab two of our M416 little bolts. So there's no easy way to do this, but the bolt goes through here and you can fit a wrench on the other end. So I find that if you put the bolt through the hole first, like this, and go ahead and put both of them through there, and we'll grab our wrench and go through the outside here, put our channel on there, and then try to start it so so this part could get a little finicky but if you have a little bit of patience it should go pretty good and then i'm going to go ahead and tighten up the bolts really good and that's how that piece goes on so for the next part we're going to take our hot end assembly that goes from the printer make sure your wires are not tangled or anything and they're pretty happy where they are and we're going to point the tip to the bottom and we're simply going to roll it onto the channel just like that and so now working on this side, we have this bracket. And these two holes here are for bolts for these threads. If we flip this thing around, we can see there's another wallowed out area. And that's where this bolt fits in right here, just like that. And here we can see where the two M416 little bolts go in. So let's go ahead and tighten those up. Snug. And this is how the bracket mounts. All right, and so this is what our X-axis assembly looks like so far. So it's not very hard to build. A little bit confusing on how to install the parts. But as you guys can see, not something that you can't do. So we've done step three. We pretty much done step four. So for the next part, let's go ahead and install our belt. And this is not as hard as it seems. So you're just gonna grab one end of the belt with the teeth pointing down. And we're literally just gonna put it right in the channel like this. And so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hot end and we're gonna run it over. Just like that. And when we run it over, it's going to be underneath the wheels of our hot end. And then we're gonna feed this thing all the way through into our X-axis motor. And we can see it comes out from the top over there. So now we need to grab it and we're gonna pull it out a bit. And then we're gonna loop it back around underneath the sprocket. And it's basically gonna come out at the other end here on the bottom. So not very hard. We'll go around the sprocket. And so now we're looking at the bottom and here on our hot end, we're simply just gonna go into this slot right here just like that so now we can pull on this other end and that should tighten it up so looking back on the top this is just going to go around and then back to itself right here but we can't do that yet because we have to install our idler tensioner here and this is this piece right here and so this tensioner pulley actually comes apart if you unscrew this knob here and i think this is probably the best way to do it so if we unscrew it and just push it through it should come out and you guys can kind of see what that looks like so it has a little rail system that it slides into here so you can't really get it wrong putting it back together and so now we're going to take our belt and we're just going to go through the idler pulley 
So before connecting the belt to the hot end, we need to go ahead and reassemble our tensioner. And the way this thing goes, the smooth area here is the front, this is the top, and the longer slot is the back. So it's going to go in just like that if you're looking at it from the front. Now you will need to take this bolt out if you went ahead and put it in. And that's because this bracket here goes right over it. So what we're going to do is we'll grab the idler and we're simply just going to slide it back into where it was with our belt in it. Put our little knob on so it doesn't fall out. We're going to leave that quite loose for now so we have plenty of room to work with. And now we're just going to simply slide right over this channel here. Now there was a little bolt that was included with the pull adjuster and that goes in the front. So let's go ahead and tighten that up. And then our original bolt goes back into here and we're going to snug that up. But we don't want to go crazy tight because we have plastic here. And that's how the idler pulley goes on. We're going to go around to the hot end and we're going to hook the other end of the belt into the slot. Just like that. And we want to tug on them just a bit to make sure they're set all the way down into the slots. And so now our belt is on and we can go ahead and tension it up a bit. I and mean, you want to be very light on this because here you can't really tell how much you're tensioning it. Always feel the belt and make sure you're not too tight. Like I already have it too tight and I didn't even really know that from here. So we want to run this back and forth and make sure our belt is running true on our pulleys. And so this is how the x-axis assembly goes together. So we're going to grab it. Now you want to make sure that none of your wires are twisted. So if you have to twist this thing around back and forth. But mine looks about right, right where it is. And so these rollers here will simply go over the channel. So let's go ahead and feed them in. Now we still have our lead screw. And we can see it right here. And we need to feed it into this brass bushing. And so we're simply just going to line it up. And then twist it here at the coupler and we can see how it walks right in. So making sure all of our stuff lines up, we're just going to go straight down. So we can go ahead and push on this and it should go pretty straight. And here you'll be able to kind of tell if everything is lining up really good or not. And so for the next part, we're going to be installing our brace that goes up here. And we are going to need our M525 bolts, and there are four of them. And if you look at this channel, you can see there's a wallowed out part that goes to the top, and the normal end goes to the bottom like this. That wallowed out part is for the bolt to fit in. And so what we want to do here is we just want to barely snug it. We want it to be loose still. Because right now we're at a critical point where our whole frame, or the top gantry part, is adjustable. And we want it to sit in the most natural place where it wants to, where there's no binding. And so now we can really adjust everything correctly because our bottom channels here are not tight. So it's all still moving. The top is not tight. So our space between these brackets should be already automatically adjusted since we're all the way down. And we need to check our wheels to make sure they're more looser than tighter. That way nothing's under strain. So now that we know that these are pretty much where they need to be, we can go ahead and tighten them from the bottom. And you want to make sure these are quite snug, but definitely don't over tighten it. Same thing for this side. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up. So now we know that we are good down here. Let's go ahead and bring this up to the very top here. So now the spacing between these two channels is going to be just right. And we can go ahead and tighten these bolts on the top. So yeah guys, as you can see, if you take a little bit of extra care of how you assemble it, you can get everything spaced out just right. And a lot of people don't realize that this goes a long way to getting that perfect print on the bed. And so the little test you can do by knowing nothing's really binding is if you just push this down, it should go down really easy without any kind of binding or jumps in it or anything. All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and adjust our little roller. So we're gonna do the same thing here as we did on the bed. Eccentric nuts on here are on the inside on these two rollers here. So we're just gonna tighten it up just barely. Okay, that's probably a little tight. Let's back off just a bit. And there we go. So I can spin that quite easy. And these spin also a little bit. Same thing on this side. Good, good, and good. All right, and so all our X axis is nice and solid and it's not flexing back and forth. Now, since we're on the rollers, we can go ahead and check out our hot end here. And we can see that there's two rollers on top that are stationary than the adjustable ones on the bottom. And it actually looks like it's exactly like it needs to be. So if you do need to adjust it, the centric nut is underneath here. And so you just spin it a little bit back and forth until you get just a light drag of all of the wheels. And so when you move it back and forth, it should have a very smooth motion. 
no jittering or any kind of jumping or anything it should be very smooth so we are on step seven and we've installed the top brace there adjusted all our wheels and on this same step we actually installed the display which we have right here and there's a bracket here in the back and it looks like it does pop out that's interesting and if you guys can see there's three bolts with t-nuts going through there and they simply connect to this channel here on an angle like this so we're going to grab a wrench and loosen all these t-nuts so they can move around and then we're going to line them up with the channel so these two will go on the bottom slot and the one here will go on the top so i'm just going to go flush right here and so my panel will stick out a little to the front but you know you can go as far back as you want or forward so that's two and the third one so that is solid as a rock. So before we slide the display on, let's go ahead and plug it in. And we'll simply plug it just into the display like that. And now we can slide it back on just like that. And it actually clicks in. And as simple as that, our display is on. All right, guys, so we got a couple more steps left. So step eight here is installing the spool holder and then our little profile covers and also the extruder knob. So let's start with the spool holder and that actually goes up here. So the metal part is actually going to face backwards like this. So the nice part will be facing away from the front. And then we're going to take the nut off the, the round spool part and thread it through there and then put the nut on and then use your hand to turn the spool part of it and the nut will tighten up. And that's it. And it's going to go somewhere over here. And our hardware for the spool holder is in separate little baggies. So we have two T-nuts and we have two bolts in 5, 8 millimeter. And so we're going to grab the bolt and put it through the hole here. And then start the T-nut on the bottom of that. You can see how the T-nut goes. And we're going to do the other one the same way. All right. So now we're going to go to the printer and set the T-nuts into the channel on the top here. And I'm going to go this way as far as I can. And we're going to tighten it right there. So we can go ahead and snug these up. But don't snug them too hard because you'll damage the channel on the other end. And so this is what the spool holder looks like. So the spool will go here and then it, the filament will feed into the extruder down here. And so while we're up here, we can go ahead and grab these profile covers. And there's two of them. And they go right here. So there's sharp edges here. And this is to protect the side so that you don't get cut. So these just simply just press on. And if they're not going on good, you can just tap them a little and they'll pop right in. And same thing on this other side. All right, looking nice. So here we're looking at the extruder. We need to go ahead and install a coupler. So there is brass threads, and that's going to be a nice connection there. We can grab our wrench and tighten it up. And while we're here, we can go ahead and connect our PTFE tubing. And that's simply just inserting it into the coupler. And so the coupler's job is to grab it and hold it. Now Creality does include these little clips and there's a couple of them I guess and one extra one and you definitely want to use these. So what you're going to do is you're going to spread these two pieces apart and then you're going to put this clip in here just like that. And that's going to ensure that it locks it in really good and the PTF tubing is not going to be moving around. You can go ahead and install the knob. Now if you noticed on the bottom of the knob there's a little flat spot and on the motor there's also a flat spot which is right there. So what you want to do is line up the two flat spots and then insert the knob just like that. So now we have a little knob here that we can use to push filament in and out. And also while it's printing, this thing will be spinning so you can see that it's moving. All right, guys, so we're really close to being finished assembling everything. The only thing we have left to do is plug a few things in and it will be pretty much done. So here in the front, we can see we have a couple plugs and one of them is the motor, which goes to the back. And the smaller one is the Z axis switch and they are labeled. There's a little yellow label that says Z on here. So the switch will click into here and then the motor wire we're going to send to the back and connect it right here. So it's actually quite a tight fit, but it does reach and that's how it goes. So on the back of the machine, we have a few more wires. Since our hot end is already connected, we don't really have to do anything there. But we do have this other flat cable here that comes out that has a few more plugs. And they are labeled. So this one says E, X, X also, which is a smaller one for the switch. So the E is for the extruder. And that simply goes right here. And then the X larger plug is for the motor. And that clicks right underneath. But the X switch is actually inside this housing here. And you can maybe see it, but it's a little hard to reach, but it clicks in right there. So, And this is where all these wires go. And the wire that comes from the hot end actually has a little place where it can clip in right here where it's kind of held. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. So all of our Y is already connected. So everything else is connected. 
and we're pretty much good to go except for one thing that's very important and that is in the back of the printer and you can see right here that is the voltage setting so depending on where you live you want to switch that to the right voltage so I need 115 and it's on 230 right now so I'm going to go ahead and switch that so make sure that you check this before you plug your printer in it's very important so yeah and that is everything with the assembly now the only thing we got to do is put our glass bed back on so the bill plate is glass there's a little protector on top of here and we can see we have that ultra base style coating on it and we get a nice little ender logo here so you do have a choice you can print on this or you can print on glass it has glass on the other side so we're definitely gonna be using the ultra base. I really like this stuff. When it's hot, it grabs the filament and then when it cools off, it just pops right off. Now the interesting part is these clips here. And to me, this seems a little bizarre how the bed is held, but I guess we just clip it back on like that on both ends. And that should be good enough. And it seems like it's holding really good. It just, I guess it's a little bit unusual, but in any case, seems to be fine. And it looks really, really nice. So before we plug it in and power it on, let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the features. So starting up here on the top, we have the spool holder. I just realized that you could probably move it even more far this way and put it in between this bolt right here. So I might do that. So up here, everything's quite basic. We move to the back, we can see the lead screw just kind of hangs there. There's no support here. As we go down, we can see our extruder with the extruder knob and the motor underneath. And as we go this way, we have the X-axis motor, the X-axis switch is in there, the X-axis rail with the hot end riding on it, and the X-axis tensioner over here. As we go down, we have the Z-axis motor and our switch that we installed. And at the back, we have the Y-axis motor. And then there's this enclosure here that kind of hides everything, which is, I guess, good, you know, not to get anything caught in there, but not very good for servicing. Now, there is a little bolt right there that you take out and all this comes off and the Y-axis switch comes off with it. So good for safety, but maybe not so good for serviceability. And as we go down, we can see that's where our switch is for the voltage. By the way, the power supply is a mean well and it's this whole piece right over here. So it's part of the structure of the printer. And over here we have the power inlet socket with an on and off switch and the socket is fused. And it's kind of an interesting design because it kind of protrudes out here to the very back but definitely a pretty nice look overall. So the bed is heated, and this is the wire that comes out of it. it. Looks like it's strain relief somewhat, and the strain relief just hooks up to one of the legs on the bolt of the bed. And I like how Creality uses this cable protectors. They're quite nice and premium feeling. So as far as the bed is concerned, we have the glass on top, then we have an aluminum sheet, which is the heating element underneath that. And it's not insulated, but technically not really needed for this bed size. So we have four large adjustable knobs. So as we go this way, we can see we have the display here, cable running out from the bottom. And I definitely like this feature that you can pull it off. So this might be useful to some people. So a pretty large screen on this display. We have a protector here. Let's go ahead and peel that off. And we'll check out shortly here what it actually looks like. So as we go this way in front of the printer, we can see we have a little drawer here. So the old Ender 3 didn't have a drawer, but you were able to, you know, print something out to put in there. But here they included an actual drawer and it's enclosed. But obviously you can store all your tools and little things from this printer. And it does completely come out, which gives you additional storage on the side and the back. And there is a little nub right there that locks it in when you close it so it doesn't pop out. Very nice drawer. And as we keep going this way, we can see this is where we're going to plug in our micro SD card and this is our USB connection. And just on top of that here, we have the specs of the printer. So we can see it's Ender 3 version 2. That's the power supply. That's the print size, which is 220 by 220 by 250. And it weighs about eight kilograms. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the printer. And as you guys can see that Creality really fixed all the issues that the earlier version has and even improved on the pro version and gave us this version too. All right, so let's plug our power cable in. Now again, make sure your voltage is set to the correct setting. So I'm gonna hit the power switch and we should power on and there we go. So we got a Creality logo in the load bar, and there it goes. The next thing we need to do is home the printer and check make sure all of our axes work. Now before we do that, we need to run the bed down as much as we can, or a good amount. And the reason you want to do this is because you don't want your nozzle to hit the glass. And another way to check that after you run it down is to just push it down to the end stop switch because that's where it's going to stop it. And you can look underneath and see if you just have an air gap. And we definitely have one. All right, so I'm going to use this rotary knob here to select prepare and then out to home. And there it goes. 
all right so it looks like everything is working and there goes the z so here guys you can see the display a little better and it's very nice and i love this control knob it's very responsive it's not laggy or anything strange everything is very quick so everything is laid out on this nice screen and on the bottom here you can see we have information which is the hot end and then the bed it looks like the speed and then the z axis i think that's fan speed so it doesn't appear that this printer has a leveling assistant so that just means that we have to level the bed manually but what you're going to do is you're going to go to out of home so once that homes then you can go to a disable steppers so when we do that we're going to be able to move the hot end you will have to be very careful with the z-axis coming down because it moves quite easy so you're going to need a sheet of paper i'm just going to use this creality thank you and so what we need to do is we need to level the four corners and we're simply just going to go to the corner but you don't want to go all the way on the edge and so we're going to get that close and then we're going to go to the other side and then get that close and then do the back corner and then go back to where you started and you want to do this a few times till it's all close because every time you change it here it changes somewhere else so you definitely want to go around at least four or five times now when you think you're really close what you want to do next preheat the bed and hot end so here under prepare I'm going to click on preheat PLA and we can see that's going to go to 185 on the hot end and 45 on the bed so as that heats up let's go ahead and out of home again because we want to make sure that we have the right offset on the z-axis then we're going to disable the steppers and so as that's heating up we should be able to get our final adjustment in which is going to be very slight all right and so the bed is hot and the nozzle is hot and it looks like we have a very close measurement right here and this is roughly how you level the bed now take your time and do this right like even if it takes you 15 20 minutes just keep doing it go over and over again until you know that every corner of the bed is as flat as it can be and keep homing it that way your reference is correct so let's take a quick look at the display so this is the home where it starts you have the Creality logo up here then we have a print a prepare control and info and the way you toggle with those you just rotate this knob and you can see it all moves around and on the bottom this information stays as like a little dedicated dashboard so under print this is where we're going to print our files once we insert our SD card prepare is where our tools are so we have move we can move all the axes including the extruder disable steppers out of home set home offsets preheat PLA preheat ABS cool down so this is going to cool down the bed and the hot end and then language selection which we have English here or Chinese two options so let's go back here we have the control so we can control the temperature you can actually set the preheat settings right here so for PLA you can adjust that what you want so let's say we'll adjust the bed to 50 instead of 45 you can also set the fan speed here and then we can save the parameters by clicking on the bottom and that's it so that's these options here so then we have motion and here we can have max speed max acceleration max corner and transmission ratio so these are more advanced settings so if you know what you're doing you do have these options storage configuration read configuration and reset configuration so we're going to leave all these alone let's go back and then we have an info and this is about our printer all right so yeah pretty basic and very intuitive controls and i'm definitely loving the navigation and the ui very nice so for the next part let's go ahead and put in our filament so i'm going to use this roll of blue overture pla and this is where the spool is going to go and so we're going to take our filament and we're going to put it straight into the extruder arm right here so this arm does release once you push it and you definitely want to cut your filament on an angle that way it can feed in a lot easier but what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of push it in there into the gear and then we can use our extruder knob here to push it the rest of the way so as we feed it through eventually it's going to go all the way through the tube and then out the hot end and there we go so i met some resistance so now i am pushing in the filament and we can see it coming out the bottom so now let's go ahead and grab our micro sd card and it is an 8 gig and we're going to insert it into the slot upside down now if we click on print well that's kind of odd there's nothing on the card i tried to restart the printer and reinsert it but maybe there's nothing included usually they include like a test model or two okay so maybe we should pop this into the computer and see what's on there all right so here we are at the computer and here i have the sd card open and this is what's on it and sure enough i don't see any models on here so the first thing we got here is our pdf manual and then our software so if you wanted to use the creality slicer you do have that option here and if we look here we see some g-codes so we have a cat a dog 
and a pig. Okay, so there were some G codes they were just hiding in this file and the printer was not. So here's another file called drive and I'm guessing these are drivers for something. So here's a folder that says troubleshooting some more information with PDFs and a model folder and I guess this is more stuff to print if you wanted to so these are all STL files so yeah they give you a few things here that you can print here it looks like we have a little video I guess of how to put this thing together and some other file here so instead of using those models let's go ahead and slice our own model in Cura and I prefer using this slicer here so we're gonna go over real quick of what to do so if you're new to Cura, you're going to download it. Then you're going to be at this area here where it says add a printer and you're going to click on non-network printers and you're going to go down to reality and it's alphabetical. Now they don't have the version 2 and 3, but it's pretty much the same thing as the regular one and the pro. So I use the pro profile for my printer. And so you're going to add it and this is what you'll get. So up here you can see all the settings that I have, the layer height, the wall count and all that stuff. The shell, I like to have three 20% infill usually is good. 200 on the temperature, 50 on the build plate, 45 on the speed. So we got six and a half millimeter extraction at 25 millimeter speed. So everything else is quite basic. Now the only thing is here is I use skirt instead of anything else and I have three lines going around the model. So that's pretty much it. So it's quite basic. And a lot of people ask me for my profile, but my profile is nothing special. It's pretty much just general. I normally don't depend on the profile setting as much as I depend on the printer itself. So let's go ahead and grab a STL model and drop it in. So we're going to do this calibration cube. And we can see it here on the platform. So if you select it, we can move it around in every direction. And you can enter these manually. You can scale it up and down. You can rotate it around. Mirror it. Here you have more advanced options. So when you have all these parameters where you want them, all you're gonna do is click the slice button and it's gonna slice it. So according to our slicing, it'll take 41 minutes and five grams of filament. So if we click on this preview button, I'll zoom in here a little bit. Here we can see every layer and how it's gonna print. We can see that that's our skirt and then it starts printing the model. So now we can go ahead and save it. And Kira sees that we have the micro SD card inserted. So we can save it straight to there. I'm gonna click that and we can inject it from here. And now we can go to our printer and print this little cube. So as you guys can see, Cura is not very hard to use. If you want to learn more in depth of how to use the slicer, there's a lot of good videos out there. All right, now that we sliced the file, let's go ahead and print it. So we have a calibration cube right here, it says. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. Grab this little booger here. All right, so it looks like it's ready to go. So let's hope our offset is going to be all right. Okay, and it looks pretty good right off the bat. As far as I can see. All right, well, it looks like the offset is just right off the bed. So naturally, as we're printing, our screen here changed a bit. So on the top here, we have the file that we're printing, the progress bar, and the percentage that's finished, the printing time that's passed, and the remaining time, which looks like it doesn't know at this point. And we do have a few options here that we can tune with. So we have tune, pause, and stop. So if we go to tune, so here we can see we can adjust the print speed, the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, the fan speed, and the z-axis offset, which I guess we could do that right on the fly. So if you need to do that, you can. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So yeah, very basic and good options. All right, so it looks like our print has successfully started and everything looks good. And by the way, guys, the printer is quite quiet except for the fans. So you can hear there's no stepper driver noise, but there is quite a bit of fan noise and that's coming from all around, including the bottom. And you guys can see our extruder knob there turning, show, indicating us you know, that the filament's going in. Well, I'm pretty excited to see what the calibration cube will look like. I have really high hopes for this printer. Compared to the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro out of the box, this thing should give us a much nicer finish. All right, and our first print is done and it looks really good. So let's go ahead and try out how this perforated bed works. When it heats, it really sticks. And then as it's cooled off, it should pop right out. So it is quite cool right now. So I'm just gonna push on it. It just comes right off, no problem. And we can see our bottoms are very nice because of that type of bed. So the top is looking also very good, but what's more important is going to be our X and Y axes. So the Y is looking really nice. Now there is just a slight hint of layering, but it's very minor. Here's our Y wall. 
So very minimal vibrations. And here we have the X, also very nice. No ghosting looks like. So very accurate. Now, after running the machine for a bit, we wanna double check everything again. We wanna check, make sure our belts are still tight. And they might have loosened up a bit actually, so we need to tighten them up just a bit. Same thing for the Y here. Also need to tighten that a bit. As far as our first print goes, a very reasonable one indeed. So it seems like it did great overall. I'm gonna go ahead and print a Benchy also in this color and we'll look at it a little closer. All right, so the Benchy is done and I actually printed one more thing, which is this gear here. So let's take a look at this Benchy first and the Benchy actually turned out better than I thought it would. And I think it had something to do with me tightening up these belts a little bit. I think they were not as tight as they needed to be. And so here you guys can see the Benchy is looking a lot better. If you look at that wall there, it looks very nice. So on this wall here, there's practically no ghosting or ringing. There's a little bit right there, but on this wall, there's a little bit more you can see right there. So the ghosting did appear. Maybe I over tightened the belt a bit. So we can see there's a little bit of vibrations in the walls, but it's quite minor. Our cooling is quite decent. Here in the back, we can see the 3D Benchy wording there. That turned out good also. So overall, a pretty nice print and quite respectable. And our bottom is looking very nice. So I'm quite happy with how it prints out of the box. It's in there. And look at that, it just pops right off. I'm glad Creality went to this bed style because overall, for pretty much all your prints, it works out really good. So I printed this gear in white PLA. And we can look at the walls here. They look very good. So I haven't spun this at all. Let's go ahead and try it here. And it's not turning easily. Oh, there it goes. Just need a little push. So very happy to see that. And this is the gear that's a little harder to print because it has six little gears inside. It requires a little better tolerances. So just as expected, Creality always does a great job when it comes to tolerances and the overall print quality. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and print a few more things and then we'll take a closer look at that. Alright guys, so I printed a few items and they all turned out very well. So first things first, what I wanted to show you is the calibration cubes. Now this blue one that we printed right in the beginning and this black one here, I printed at the very end. It was the last print and it looks like we got a little better quality. See here on the X. So we got very minor vibrations and pretty much no ghosting. So the Y has a little bit more vibrations we can see. And again, almost no ghosting. So here's our X wall and our Y wall. Also pretty good. Now if you notice on this filament here, we don't have so many lines like we did in the blue filament. So it could have been just the filament. But either way, I just wanted to show you guys that the print quality is very good and that's our bottoms there. So, so with that out of the way, this owl here was on the SD card and I sliced them. And by the way guys, all the prints that you're going to see are in 0.16 layer height at 50 millimeters per second speed. So this is a rainbow filament and it started out this orangey gold color and then went to this pinkish and then to darker orange and then back to the lighter up here. So it turned out okay overall, not as good as I wanted. And it's just this model, it's not scaled very well. And this is the size that it was on the SD card. I probably should have made it smaller. And it did have random layer stitching so the little dots are everywhere, which is the mistake I made also. In the slicer you can choose how you want your Z seam to be. So this is random here. But other than that, the print is very nice. I did have an issue up here, which was retraction was not enough. So I ended up bumping up the retraction all the way to nine millimeters and that seems to be about where it's okay. So yeah, not a bad print and about what to expect. So after that, I wanted to print a little bit of something that was precise and delicate and it is this octopus here. And this is printed in silky gold. So it turned out really nice. And you can really see on his head how good the filament is sitting. And on this model, you can see where the seam goes in the back. So yeah, it turned out very well. And these little feet here, they're really tiny and they have linkages and there was no issues whatsoever. Once this thing printed, it just popped right off, no problems. So that just shows you how well this type of build platform works. So the next print I printed is this little frog and this is in silk bronze PLA. So this little froggy turned out very nice also. I like to print the slow frog because there's a lot of interesting curves and it's very small. So accuracy has to be good. And as you guys can see overall, it turned out quite nice. 
Now over here under his arms, we did have a little bit of trouble and I think that is cooling maybe, but other than that, he turned out quite well. Now again, on this print, the seam was random. So that's why you see all those little dots everywhere. But yeah, as far as layer adhesion and how well the layers go together, it's excellent. Now, how can I make a 3D printing without printing my two favorite items, which is this astronaut and the spaceship? Let's take a look at the astronaut first. So this is the same filament as the frog. And as you guys can see, it turned out very nice. So you can really see how the layers sit. And especially here around the shoes, you can see how well the reflections are. So, so yeah, the layer adhesion is excellent. Practically no layer shifting or anything funny. So now there is a slight vibration in the print. You can kind of see it, but it's not heavy at all. Very light. Now what's hard about this print is that it has a very low surface area. It was still able to hold on to the bed the whole time and finish the print without popping off. So yeah, as you can see, the quality in the prints are very nice. All right, so last but not least, we have the spaceship. And I really like printing this thing because it does a few things. First, we test the spiralized mode, which is one layer all the way around. So this thing's very thin and hollow. And also we test the full height of the printing area. And so this is almost 250 millimeters. Millimeters. So you can kind of get an idea how tall you can print. So the bottoms as usual looking excellent And by the way, this is silky black and if we look at our side walls, we can see they look really nice Now there is a vibration and you guys can see in this reflections here So they're not the kind of vibrations that you can really feel they're very minor But if we look at the rounded parts, we can see how nice the layers sit there. So so overall it looks really good there is a slight vibration. The model still looks amazingly well. And it seems to do a lot better when it's to make more smaller circles. So. And up here we have the point, and I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but there's like a little twirl that goes all the way around, even on the ball. And I've never seen that before, so I'm not sure what happened there. Seemed like maybe something with the G-code maybe, but in any case, it did go all the way to the ball and it finished it and nothing melted. That was the impressive part. And it's nice to see that it can print these thinner kind of areas. So. So yeah guys, overall as you can see, the printer prints very nice and definitely better right out of the box than the original Ender or the Ender Pro. Now with that said, it's not perfect for sure. And one of those things being the spool holder all the way up there. So I definitely would move my spool holder down to the side. And also as nice as these belt tensioners are, I find them a little bit hard to tune the belt just right. It's something to get used to for sure. And I just feel like there's not enough feedback to how tight they are. But that looks like it's going to be staying because a lot of the newer printers are starting to have these. The display control unit is excellent. This is definitely one of my favorite parts about the printer. The navigation is just flawless. The screen is bright and just gives it a very premium feel. The drawer under here is a great addition to this printer. And as you guys can see, I have all the parts from it already in there. I also love that they included the silent stepper drivers now, so the printer is very quiet. Now, it does still have pretty loud fan noise, so that's something maybe, you know, upgradable or in the future might be addressed. So yeah, guys, overall, I think Creality knocked it out of the park with this printer. And with all the features that it has as a budget printer, it seems like a really great value. So if you're just getting started and you want to get into printing, this is definitely a good printer to start. Now, there is assembly required, but what I like about the idea of assembling it yourself is that you get to learn a little bit of how the printer works. And if you're someone one that's been around 3D printers for a while, you know how the Ender printer is for using it casually, prototyping, or even farming. And as this printer is overall, I wish two things for it. One is that it would have a filament detector. So if you run out of filament, you know, this thing's not going to know. And the second one is I wish they'd had the bed leveling assistant in there where it would move the nozzle for you because it's a little frustrating. And I can imagine for newcomers, you know, bed leveling is extremely important and Creality makes it kind of hard actually. And that with these X axes, you know, if you disable the steppers, this thing falls so easy. You know, you're constantly going to be fighting with it sitting still. So you have to be real careful how you touch it. And so that's a little disappointing because knowing who's going to buy this printer, the bed leveling should have been a priority and unfortunately it was not. But with that said, overall, I'm very impressed with it. I think this printer is still going to press on for the Ender 3 to stay number one of being the best budget printer. So if you guys are interested in this printer, I'm going to have some links in the description. Check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. I definitely appreciate all you guys that watch my videos. And also there's a lot more 3D printing stuff coming, so stay tuned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.